Hi everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a video on this particular knife. And it's so beautiful that I thought this knife deserved a video all of its own, okay? Uh, this is a Rough Rider um, Stockman style knife which belongs to their old Southwestern uh, series, okay? And they call it the Old Southwestern uh, because of the design on the knife. Not the actual style of the knife, but the design on the knife itself. Uh, they call it the Old Southwestern style. Okay. And just by looking at the design, that's what it reminds you of. The Old Southwestern culture. The Old Southwestern artwork. Now, when I first got this knife straight out of the box, I examined it thoroughly and I saw no flaws. Uh, I even praised on the workmanship of the knife. But then one day, uh, a past couple of days ago, I noticed that there was a gap occurring here between the back spring and the scale right there. As you can see, there's a, a gap there. Okay. Uh, I didn't notice it straight out of the box. I don't know. Uh, maybe I didn't, uh, or maybe I overlooked it, but I don't think I did. Uh, I thought it was pretty tight when I first got it, but for some reason, it's just uh, there's a gap that just occurred there. I didn't, I never dropped the knife, and I never used it other than to cut paper with it just to t test the sharpness of it of the blades. But you know what? For under twenty dollars. I held this knife uh, still as a very good quality built knife, uh, beautiful knife. That little bit of gap that's right there, uh, I'm gonna tell you, to me that just has that just gives the knife a character. It might be reflective of uh, inexpensive knives, but it's still its its own character. Okay, that that gap there is not interfering with the functionality of the knife. Uh, the knife works beautifully. Um, and you know what? If this was sitting on a table with among other exact same knives, I'd be able to pick this up and tell people, hey, this is my knife because it has a gap right there. So it's a way for me to tell that this is my knife and uh, it's, uh, it's unique in its own right. Now, everybody wants something slightly different than everybody else, right? If if a factory was to produce these knives, every single one of them exactly the same way with the exact same quality, exact perfect craftsmanship and everything else, um, then there's nothing to make that knife special or different than its siblings. So this one here, to me, and that little gap right there, right there, to me, makes this knife special to me. Now, if I was to pay uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 200 dollars for this knife, um, I wouldn't want, yeah, I wouldn't want that kind of flaw or that kind of gap right there yeah I wouldn't but I would expect maybe the hand craftsmanship the design to be slightly different than every other uh, same model you know I want it to be a little special um, and I definitely want the materials that are used in a more expensive knife to be actual genuine uh, rare wood or a real bone or a real stag and I, I don't want it to look like it was all stamped out exactly the same from one to the next you know uh, if you pick up the same brand knife same style same design and, you, and it's in a very expensive knife and you put it to put it next to each other I would expect the design or the pattern on the scales to be a little different from the other one.
to just give each knife a unique characteristic. So that's what I expect from a very expensive knife. But from an ex inexpensive knife, a cheap knife, um, yes, a factory, everything's identical to one knife to the other. But uh, what differentiates this knife from any other Rough Rider, same brand, same style knife, is probably going to be this gap. And that's what's going to tell me, hey, this is my knife, okay? And uh, let's let's talk about this knife. Let's let's really talk about this knife now. This is this is my theory on a stockman or cattleman's knife, okay? Uh, in the old days, in the old days, you really didn't have this kind of knife. This is a modern flipper, okay? It took many decades or many years to come up with something like this. A one hand open flipper, okay? Um, this came first. Now, this knife has its own purposes, okay? Obviously, when you're out in the field doing things and you can't take the time to use both, uh, take, it, take it out of your pocket, and take time to use both hands to open it. Um, you don't, you, you know, it has its own purpose. It, it's supposed to be quick access, quick release, get right down to cutting, and then put it away, right? So, um, has its own purposes. And most people rather to carry this because it's um, quicker, it's quicker to use. And people just like the modern style of it being utilitarian and also somewhat tactical, okay? But to me, this, this is the ultimate utility knife in your pocket uh, as a pocket, pocket knife. Not a multi-tool or anything like that, but as a pocket knife. Now... What would a cattleman use these blades for? Okay, well, obviously this is a spade blade. So a cattleman would, uh, you know, have a uh, cattle tie down or whatever. Um, not a, I'm not a ranch hand and I'm not experienced in being a cowboy. So I'm not sure how would they would actually do prepare the cattle for this, but this is supposed to be what was used to cut off the testicles of bulls. <laughs> At least that's what I was told or that's what I saw. Yeah, or um, So, you know, uh, this is something used to basically uh, cut soft tissue, okay? And if you look at the way the blade is sh shaped, it's almost shaped like a scalpel. If, if you look at a scalpel, a medical scalpel, basically this is what the shape will remind you of if you look at a medical sh uh, surgeon's scalpel, okay? So this would be used strictly for cutting, uh, cutting uh, flesh and tendons and things like that, okay? So you wouldn't use this to... Um, you know, make it dull on hard things to make it dull. You would save this blade to use on flesh, okay? Cutting flesh. All right, now, this is the blade that you would use to carve and whittle with, okay? So this is the blade that you would savor to do the hard cutting and the, and the, uh, slicing and, and carving of wood and things like that, okay? And also like using it like an exacto knife, okay? Cutting strips, uh, even maybe cutting um, fabric and things like that, okay? The clip point blade is your multi-purpose blade and I can see why it would have a sharp clip point. Um, let's let's say that uh, 
you have something tied up real tight like this, okay, and you want to cut this cordage, you want this very pointy end to be able to easily go in between the cordage and wherever you're trying to get into, okay? Just to get 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 in there. You know, this could be a very tight knot on a fence post, okay? Um, it could be a very tight uh, rope tied around a tree, okay? And you want something pointy to be able to get in between the cordage and the knife turn in and cut okay now that's what I would think that this drop point is good for um, also you know if you hold your hold your folder like this in a safe manner and you did want to poke a hole in something or stab something like a fish or, or uh, uh, you know, gain uh, just to get started on cutting open the belly or whatever. Yes, this is definitely uh, what that is for as well to start a uh, gutting process where you poke a hole into the gut and you start gutting the gutting the uh, game, whatever you catch, hunt down or whatever. You know, so this is a multi-purpose knife that you would use to, you know, do a majority of your multi multiple tasks. Let's see how sharp it is. This is 550 cord. Cuts it. Now, this is not a factory edge. I sharpened this. I sharpened this using a hand sharpener and also I stropped it. So it is considerably more sharp. It is more sharper than what it was straight out of the box. Okay, so once again, this is the clip point knife. Uh, it has a very sharp tip. And this is mainly to poke a hole in flesh. And start to gut, to gut the, do the gutting process. Also, it's very pointy and, um, very uh, uh, slim so you can fit in between and cut okay and as you can see you really can't do that with a sheep's foot okay You go in there, you can get the blade in there, but you really can't turn it upwards because it's so dang, it's so dang thick, right? Can't cut it, cut, can't cut it. You can't get in that, you, if somebody tied a very tight, you know, uh, they tied a rope around the tree or a fence post really tight like this, and this big blade is too thick to, it, yeah, it can get in between, but it's too t too thick to turn and cut. Same with this. This might be able to do it better. But not really. And also, uh, you could probably use uh, this one here uh, once you do poke a hole in the belly of whatever you're skinning or clean gutting I'm sorry not skinning but gutting once you poke a hole uh, you, you may want to switch over to this spade blade because now you can gut you can slice open the belly without uh, actually risking poking a hole into its um, gut the gut the guts of the animal and uh, when you poke a hole into the intestines and the guts of the animal, you you know you kind of release all that bowel and stuff, and 
it just contaminates your uh, meat. So, but anyway, in an, you know, in another theory of mine is that uh, a cattleman would have this in his pocket wearing a fixed blade. Imagine now, sometimes they may be wearing a gun and they may be wearing a fixed blade on the other side. Okay, gun on their strong arm side and a fixed blade on the left hand side. And that may be that may be the ideal way to do it. If you need a knife constantly, you want a fixed blade that you could just easily pull out. You don't have to worry about getting off the horse and taking off your workman's glove. So you could use the nail clip to get the thing out. And when you need to actually hurry up and cut a rope or cut something loose, um, you don't have time to do all that. Take this out of your pocket and take your workman's glove off and, and do all this. Okay. But if you're not in a hurry, this is the ideal way to do it. Why? Because wearing a full fixed blade on your belt and riding a horse around, I can't imagine that being comfortable. Okay. Uh, all this stuff on your belt and you're wearing and you're sitting on a horse, it can't be comfortable for the rider or even the horse. Okay, so I would think that the the pocket knife was probably a major tool that a, a ranch hand or a cattleman would use. And also for recreation, you know, when you're sitting down at night and uh, you got nothing to do, take out your pocket knife and start whittling, you know, carving. There you go, right there. All right. Or it's time to eat. And you're out in the field and it's one of those days that you get a treat and they give you a steak dinner and you got nothing to cut your steak with a lot okay there you go you got a knife and you got a knife and fork uh, all you need is a fork and a spoon or something and uh, you got a knife you always have a knife to cut your food with okay so yeah to me this is not just old-fashioned and romantic but it serves a purpose and it's very functional to this day okay and unlike the modern day uh, knife not only does this have more character but it also always almost always have more blades for you to do specific tasks with and that's what makes this so so much as relevant as this today okay seriously um like i said if you're in a hurry you can't you i mean you really need a knife um deployed fast as you can okay and on one hand it maybe in an emergency maybe you're in a car accident you need to cut your seat belt you reach in your pocket boom you're not wasting any time you cut cut the seat belt and you're out of there okay or um, you want to open your package and you don't want to fit around, just take your pocket knife out and boom, you open the package and you're done. Okay. Uh, somebody comes to you and say, hey, can you open this for me? Boom. Okay. Here you go. Ooh, it's open. There you go. On your way. Um, somebody comes to you and say, can you open this for me? Okay. Give me a second. Let me take this out of my pocket. Boom. Here you go. Okay. Just as good. Not as fast. But just as good got the job done and also at the same time here you go you got something really pretty in your pocket and to be honest with you uh this is useful and i love this knife i do the way it looks uh i among all the folders i mean the um one-handed action modern day folders uh, I think this is a beautiful knife. I like it. But uh, this is so much even better. As far as in like the feel that you get when you carry this. Now it is heavy. Most old fashioned things are. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to carry something this heavy or this long. Okay. There's always other options. The canoe, okay, quite a bit shorter and lighter and 
actually slimmer and, and, and more ergonomically be able to carry in your pocket more comfortably. Okay. And less obtrusive. How these knives are all used. You could all use any blade the same way for the uh, same tasks, but there most of them are more purposely shaped or patterned to complete certain tasks. Okay. Uh, I said both of both the the pen knife and the main blade are spear points. On this canoe <clears throat> but yes love this knife and that's this is what uh, typically is called the cattleman's knife the ranch hand knife um, and the stockman and I think uh, Randy Yeager pointed out that the stockman he read on Google that stockman is an Australian word for basically cattleman. Okay. So, all right. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry this video dragged on, but this was all about talking about this knife and my philosophy and my opinion about how each blade was used uh, and why a cattleman would have such a knife in his pocket. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.